Drum roll! It looks like, actually it doesn't look like, I am registered, but it looks like it's gonna be Big day, big day, always an exciting day when you register for the race. How's everyone doing? Okay, I am trans transitioning from coffee. I won't even say what time it is in the afternoon, old man. And whoever sent this Joe coffee, it says intense, dark cocoa, dark brown sugar, J-O. This is, it's a, this, I don't know, okay, I can't say it's my favorite coffee ever. But man, this is really, really good. So thank you. I don't even, I'm not sure who sent this. It's amazing. Okay, but I am transitioning to, hold on, wait for it, wait for it, to some English breakfast tea. Don't mind if I do because, yes, we are going live in the studio in about 15 minutes. So I got to be expeditious here. Um, let's see. So I'm going to bring this out. Now, the shoes, I just got back from my run, seven miles, I think about 750 a mile, roughly. There it is on your screen. And I'm going to give a little, well, I'm obviously going to talk about when the actual race is going to be. Very exciting. Well, that was epic. Oh, man. We went for an hour. I tried to answer as many questions as possible. Oh, my goodness. And I, I'm just, I'm still watching the chat. It's still going. I ended about five minutes ago. Thank you all for tuning in live. That was a lot of fun. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, uh, Seth, what three shoes did you unbox? Okay, so we got the Brooks Caldera 5. There it is, there it is. The Solomon Ultra 3. Oh man, a lot of people excited about this trail shoe. So two trail shoes, okay. Brooks, Solomon, and then one more. Uh-oh, the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast 3. There it is. Oh my goodness, what a... What a, uh, I guess I just say diverse day in the studio. Brooks, Solomon, and Reebok. And remember, at the end of 2020, uh, 2020 I said that I, one of my goals for 2021 was to do more testing in the Reebok lineup. So there it is, just trying to fulfill a little uh, promise to myself and to all of you. Um, so there you go. All right, butter the bread. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'm going inside. We're going to talk about the training block, um, running shoe reviews, and then the registration, the official registration. All right, here we go. Ooh. All right. Oh, boy. And here we go. All right, let's dive in. Training block is set. And let me explain, and this will walk you through a little bit of the process that I always go through at the beginning of a training block. Now, tip of the day, right now, in the current world that we live in, I would recommend finding a backup race and even a backup to the backup. And guess what? It worked for me the last training block. I was gonna do Miami. I think there was even another oh, one I was gonna do. Anyway, I ended up in Naples, okay? So having a backup to the backup on the same weekend uh, for your peak race is a really smart idea because we just cannot predict or control the future completely. All right, so that's tip number one. Uh, next point is, yes, uh, a little bit of fun uh, back and forth happening over on Strava over the past couple of days. Maybe a little bit of banter back and forth, and I love it. And um, I always am a, an open book in the sense that all of my training ends up on Strava, all of it, okay? So at some point, demoreglobalrunning.com, I will have a page there eventually dedicated just to my training. It takes a long time to develop a great website. I'm learning, and so patience there. But if, So eventually my training will be there, but in the meantime, you can see all of my uh, training, as you know, over, as many of you know, over on Strava. And on that note, if you're noticing in the title of my runs in the past four days, I'm putting 29.64.1. What does that represent? Uh, 29 minutes for the 10K. That's one of my goals for this training block. 64 minutes for the half marathon. That's one of my goals for this training block. And then the point one is the, is the fact that this is week one of training. So then next week, that'll... Uh, turn into point two, point three, 
0.4 so that as you're tracking my training on Strava and just seeing what I'm doing, you'll be able to see, okay, Seth is in week uh, eight or Seth is in week nine or whatever the case may be. Now, back to the banter. Always love your thoughts, ideas, notions, uh, critiques, and whatever, you know, thoughts you want to give about my training. Of course, you guys, I mean, I, I, there's, it would be unwise for me to listen to all of the advice because there's a lot of different conflicting ideas and advice being shared underneath the runs on Strava, but it is fun to read through. So I had to kind of give a little, um, a little banter back to a gentleman yesterday on Strava, and he was basically questioning why my training, why I was doing uh, 70 miles this week for my first week back, okay? And actually, I have switched to 60 miles for this week. I'll, hopefully, I have time to explain why I did that here in a second. But I basically replied to the gentleman that um, you don't know um, a lot of different things. You don't know my uh, length of the training block. You don't know how long it's gonna take me to get to my peak volume. You don't know what my peak volume is gonna be. You don't know how long I'm gonna hold my peak volume. And you don't know what my taper is gonna be. And you don't know what my race day is gonna be. Until now, in a minute, I'll, I'll announce it. Um, because I haven't told anybody yet. And the, and the reason, and I, it was fun. Like we went back and forth, it was fun. Like it wasn't, a, it was just banter. And I, I, I uh, replied to him though in that way as hopefully a learning moment for everybody that read that comment that until you register for a race, you really can't critique, frankly, anybody's um, training or give your opinion on anybody's training but you, because you don't know how long the training block is going to be. I could be training for a race in five years from now or I could be training for a race in five weeks from now um, so until you have more detail, which this gentleman didn't have because I'm going to announce it right now, um, it doesn't really make sense to give your opinion because it's all about timing, in my opinion, for uh, planning out a training block correctly, which from Naples, I'm learning from, and even the fact, so I went from 70 miles to 60 because um, I was preparing possibly for a half marathon in mid-April, but now, yes, drum roll! It looks like, actually it doesn't look like, I am registered, but it looks like it's gonna be the Glass City Half Marathon, April 25th in Toledo, Ohio. Toledo, if you live in Toledo, Ohio, I'm coming for you, April 25th, 2021. So now, back to the gentleman, hopefully you're watching this, let's now you can bring up some questions about my training because now you know a definitive endpoint and now you know um and i'm gonna keep an, keep this person anonymous but now you can um count back my three-week taper you can count back if you've really been listening closely how long i most likely will hold my peak volume you will now be able to look at okay why is seth going from 60 miles a week to 70 or 75 or 85 for next week. You'll just have to wait and see what I do. Um, so that's what um, I just wanted to clarify that. And it's amazing when you register for a race, the motivation, the drive. And I like to think I'm a motivated person, but I'm telling you, it all, we all, is this a word that, uh, it's, it's such a fun word. We all need a little cajoling. Is, am I using that correctly? A little cajoling in our lives to turn that doorknob to get out the door to actually write your training plan so now like right now i'm four days five days into this training block and i have not written out my training plan yet because i did not have an end goal an end point to the training block and i just love it because now i can work backward reverse engineer the training block from april 25th to the present, which I could probably look on their website right now. Right now is how many days away is it? Hold on, hold on. It's, I think it's like 80-ish or uh, 85. Oh, it's not working, hold on. I thought they had like a countdown timer. Anyway, um, it'll, it's, got, it's trying to reset, 86 days. Okay, so I'm excited and I have not decided on the 10K I'm going to do yet as a tune-up race for this peak race in Toledo, Ohio. And just a quick shout out, uh, three weeks ago on January 7th, 
upper right hand corner, I made a blog, how I create a running training plan, six questions and action items that I take in writing the plan. So one of those action items I just, I just mentioned, register for the race, the motivation, the drive, the focus, the cajoling to turn that doorknob at 5 a.m. increases infinitely for me personally, and I bet it will for you as well, as soon as you click register. Oh, how sweet it is. Oh, how sweet it is. Now, again, to everybody in Toledo, hopefully the race happens. We just have to remain flexible. I have some backup plans. You all know Austin, Texas, Eugene, Oregon, um, and even possibly, I wouldn't like this because it would mess up the training block, but possibly Pittsburgh, May 2nd, so a week after, I do believe. So there you have it, money down in the bank. Oh, so exciting. We will toss it to, and yes, again, if you missed the live stream, it was, it was fun. Three shoes, well, here are, the, here are the shoes that I opened. Onward and upward. All right, everyone, we will close it out there and we will toss it to that very training, uh, to that very blog how I create a running training plan, six steps and action items right there, right there. All right, onward and upward, seek beauty, work hard and love each other. Toledo, we're coming for you.